cheaper, healthier. We're going to use a rice cooker today. You don't need a rice cooker to cook rice, but the reason that I use a rice cooker is because it um, allows me some flexibility about when the rice is done. It actually uh, turns itself off all by itself and I don't have to be there when it's time to take it off the stove. The other thing about a rice cooker is that it can cook white rice, it can cook brown rice, it can cook millet, it can cook quinoa, it can cook a variety of other whole grains and it somehow knows when to shut itself off. So um, we're going to make brown rice but I also wanted to let you know that um, quinoa, which looks like this, very round grains, um, also could be used in place of brown rice. And you do it just the same way as you would rice in the rice cooker. You could also cook a blend of rice and this has lentils and wild rice in it also which works very well in a rice cooker or in a pan. Now these two are gluten-free blends. This one happens to be pearled barley which is a wonderful grain that people use in soups and stews. However, it is not gluten-free for those of you who need to be gluten-free. Wheat, rye, and barley are the primary grains that contain gluten. And so for today, what we're going to do, this is a three cup rice cooker. Usually a rice cooker comes with a special cup that you use for measuring it. But let's say we bought this at a garage sale and it didn't come with the cup. What I happen to know is that the rice cup that comes with this is a little bit less than an actual cup or an eight fluid ounce cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook three cups of rice. Some of the rice I'm going to leave on the counter and I'm going to fill it to not quite full. In fact, I'm going to eyeball it and I'm going to say it's seven eighths of a cup. And then I'm going to pour that first one in. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to spill on the counter again. Fill the next one up. And then I'm going to fill the next one up. So you might ask, why am I cooking three cups of rice? That's actually a lot of rice. It turns out that three cups is what this rice cooker will hold. And it's very easily reused again for other meals. And what it allows you to do is heat what you need or prepare what you need for the next meal. And then you could put it away in the refrigerator, either in a glass jar or even in this container with the lid on it. And then you could continue to reheat or you could prepare your leftover meals that you're going to have perhaps for lunch uh, um, just straight from the refrigerator when it's already cold even. You could also make breakfast from this rice as well. Uh, many, many possibilities. One of the things that I'm going to do with this rice is I'm actually going to rinse it and so I'm going to run some water on the rice and toss it around a bit. Now if I were doing this with quinoa, you see a little bit of soapiness here. And with uh, quinoa, that uh, soapiness is partly where some of the bitterness is. And so many people are very careful about rinsing uh, because of the flavor. Um, there are many reasons to rinse. Um, one of them is just to make sure it's clean. And another is the outcome uh, usually comes out better when it's rinsed. If you 
don't rinse it though, it usually still turns out. The rice cooker also has a little hole in the lid, so that helps to dump out the water. The hole isn't for the purpose of rinsing, though it's for steam release. And then there is a line on this rice cooker that tells me what the maximum fill is. And it says three cups. So I'm, I'm there. And then I put it in the rice cooker, cover it, plug it in, and turn it on. So the brown rice in this rice cooker I wasn't keeping track of time, so I don't really know how long it took. I do know that it cooked it to the perfect texture. It doesn't always turn out perfectly, especially if you don't have the little cup that came with the rice cooker. I, as you remember, I used 7 eighths of a cup to approximate the cup that normally comes with the rice cooker and I happened to get lucky. It got to the right texture in the end. If I had not put enough water in, and it's better to err on the side of not adding enough water, what I could have done is taken a little bit of water, in a, just poured water into it, and while the pan was still hot, I would just put the lid right back on and usually with the re residual heat that's there, it would continue to absorb into the rice. So all's not lost. You don't have to wait till the next batch to do a better job. Just add a little more water and you might have to turn it back on again. Now, if you're using a rice cooker for millet or quinoa, and you also didn't guess the right amount of water, but pretty much it's two to one, twice as much water as grain, then I would do the same thing. I would just add a little more water and wait for the grain to completely swell until it's finished.